Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, if this is your first time here, my name is Kyle, and my girlfriend Jess and I have been full-time traveling for almost a year now. Today's video is not gonna be like our typical travel vlog where we're out and about doing something adventurous or showing you guys something new from a different part of the world. We've been asked a number of times what kind of camera gear we're using, what kind of computer we're editing on, how much did we spend for all of our equipment. And so in today's video, we'd like to answer a lot of those common questions and give you an idea of what it is that we are using for our videos. Now, all this to say, we do not have by any means what you would deem the latest and greatest or most expensive gear, but we have been asked these questions a couple of times. We've been given good compliments on our content. So we feel that it definitely stands up to what we needed to. And so we'd like to go over that with you and give you an idea of what it is that we use for our videos. And hopefully that will give you a good idea of kind of gear that you'll need to make the content you're looking to create. So without further ado, let's get into it. First thing we'll go over with, with you is our backup camera, which Jess is actually filming this on right now. We typically just use our cell phones. We both have an iPhone 11. It can shoot up to 4K. The audio isn't terrible. The one thing I will say about it is it's very convenient. We've always got our phones in our pockets. There's been a couple times where we're in the pinch right at the end of the day and we want to capture that last shot or two. So we definitely fall back on that. Now with that said, we wanted to get something that was of higher quality and would also have the ability to have interchangeable lenses. We went out and we got ourselves a Canon M50. Now, that's one thing I will point out is a lot of our gear is a few years older. I think the newest piece of gear we have is about four years, and so, hence the title of this video. You can definitely get away with some older equipment. The Canon M50 is really great as it shoots in 4K. Now, with that, you will have a bit of a crop factor and lose the image stabilization but we find that the 1080p works just great for us. We also have up to 60 frames per second with the 1080p. So it's got some slow motion capabilities as well. Also up to 120 frames per second if you're willing to go down to the 720p. Screen, flip out screen, it makes it so that you can actually see what you're filming, which the front facing camera isn't that great. And so if you wanna have the ability to see yourself record, it's definitely got that edge up on the phone there as well. It also comes with this kit lens, the 15 to 45 millimeter 3.5 f-stop. It's a great little setup to start out with and definitely better than the camera phone. So I think maybe we'll switch over to that. All right, and now we have switched over to the Canon M50. Now this review is gonna be a little bit different than the ones you've probably seen before. I'm gonna just keep on switching over to the equipment so that you get a first-hand experience of what the difference is when actually using each one of these pieces of equipment. So this is the Canon M50 with the kit lens. As you can see, it's okay in terms of what actually gets in the image. When you get into lower light situations, so, so, it's all right. Now, with regards to sound quality, you probably are listening to this right now on the in-camera microphone and thinking, oh gosh, this does not sound good. Let's switch over to our microphone. We got ourselves the Deity D4 Duo, which is a great microphone. It's actually two-way microphone, so there's two microphones in here. There's one on the front, one on the back. So when you're vlogging, it's really great because when you're behind the camera, you can still get decent sound quality as the person behind the camera, as well as the person in front of the camera. And so for us, it works really well bouncing, you know, conversation off each other as we're vlogging. Plus it's such a small little thing that it fits perfectly into our bag and it, it's awesome to just have on us. Small, compact, great quality sound. Let's switch over to that so you get an idea. Okay, and now we've got the microphone on. So I'm assuming that the audio has just drastically improved. And you can see why now that we had to go out and get ourselves a microphone. You might be on the fence yourself as to whether or not it's actually worth getting an on-camera microphone or if the in-camera microphone will suffice. For us, it was a no-brainer. It was just a huge step up for a very low cost. I think this was like $100 for this microphone. And like I said, it's small, compact, and it gets us the sound quality we're looking for. So there's a couple of items that make our content creation run smoothly. A couple of must-haves, a couple of nice-to-haves. One that 
I forgot to mention actually right at the very beginning is our camera bag. We've got the KNF Concept Travel Camera Bag. They've since come out with a newer version, which by the way, all of this will be listed in the description down below. But yeah, this KNF bag, there's a couple reasons I really like this bag. A, the bottom as well as this front section are both waterproof. So, I mean, being travel content creators and being outside, it's really important that we had something that was waterproof. Another thing that I like is that the actual camera kit itself opens up in the back. So why is that important? Because I can put that waterproof cover down onto the ground and then the back part that cover that my back actually makes contact with will stay nice and dry and clean. Now it's got a lot of space. I've pulled everything out since, but they've got these nice padded dividers helps you carry everything, keep everything separate, organized and clean. So it's really nice for that. We've got a nice little pouch up here where we keep our extra drone propellers or we keep uh, sometimes our hard drives or whatever else we need in there. So it's a nice big bag with lots of compartments. I love the fact that again, it opens in the back instead of the front. Now on this side, it opens up as well and it has a nice big open padded laptop sleeve never have had any issues or damage done to the laptop and we have a 15 inch laptop that fits in here just fine it's got all these little pockets on the front and sides where we can hold all the stuff that we need so it works great for us nice small and compact and then on the side here it's also got the little pouch and strap for the tripod now that's one thing I didn't mention. I'm using it right now is our tripod. We've got the KNF Concept Travel Tripod. Now another thing that we have, being that we're using the Canon M50, the batteries don't last very long. So we've got a couple of these Wasabi Power uh, batteries that work really great for us. We've got two of those, so that way we've always got three fully charged batteries whenever we're going around. For our storage, we've always used SanDisk for the SD cards. And then Seagate for our hard drives. Now, we just used, filled this one up. It's a two terabyte hard drive. And we've also got a four terabyte hard drive as well. We find that they work very well. The files transfer fairly fast, especially since we're shooting most of our stuff in 1080p. The file transfer doesn't really have that many issues. Nice thing about using kind of the smaller more prosumer cameras and gear is the file transfer isn't very big sizes and you don't need to worry about transfer speeds as much but that's about as much of the inside of the room as i wanted to show you guys i want to go step outside and show you guys some of the other lenses that we use and it's just better to not do that in here so let's go outside all right so now we're stepping outside and that brings up our next item as you can see as soon as you get outside, it's like way too bright. And so you need one of these. This is an ND filter. We'll pop that on there. Oh, if I can figure it out. Always fun to try to get the thread just right. And then as you adjust it, you're able to get the right light and it's not gonna ruin your image. You're not gonna be totally blown out and you don't need to blast up your f-stop or anything like that you can still maintain a really good image when you use the nd filter we have a nice variable nd filter so as you can see i'll point it up to the sky as i change it there's also a polarizer in there so it helps reduce the amount of glare as well so if you're doing a lot of outdoor stuff like we do definitely going to want to grab yourself an nd filter i strongly suggest checking out a variable nd filter with a polarizer that way you've got everything all in one and you're not going to break your bank now i'd like to show you guys this pool but considering i'm kind of taking up most of the frame i think we'll need the wide angle lens for that now our wide angle lens we got ourselves the canon efm 11 by 22 millimeter it's only a few more millimeters bigger but let me put that on to show you just how much more we get in this image let's check it out now as you can see with the wide angle lens we have a lot more that we can show you in the image way more of the background is visible and you can see this beautiful pool now right beside me now one thing i will point out is another thing that i wish i had known or thought of before buying some of our equipment each one of our lenses have a bit of a different size in terms of the actual 
screwing on point. So you need these little pieces called a step up ring to help fit the filter to each one of the lenses. So basically, if the screw point is a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, you can still screw on the filter. Now, what I thought is, why don't I just get the biggest filter I can so I'm good for all future lenses, and then I'll just get a number of step up rings. Well, as you can see, whenever I go super wide, the edges kind of come out as black there, if you see that. So what we often have to do is kind of zoom into 14 millimeter, which is still a little bit wider than the 15, but we're really losing the full wide angle lens. You know, there's little MacGyver tricks that you can use, but unfortunately for us, whenever we're vlogging and talking to the camera like this, it's just better to fit the full image in instead of having those little black aberrations, especially as you're moving the camera, you'll notice that it kind of comes in a little bit more. Either way, make sure that you get a step up ring that brings the filter as close to the lens as you possibly can so that you're not stuck with that same problem that we have. But still, it's a great lens, this wide angle lens, and if it's in the appropriate lighting where we don't need the filter, then it works just fine for us and we can have it wide angle. We do have a couple more lenses. So for the next lens, our telephoto lens, which is one of my favorite for both landscapes and close-ups. It's a telephoto macro lens, so it's a real unique kind of combination all in one, but it's a little bit of a tight squeeze back here to really show you what it's capable of. So let's go out front to show you that. All right, so now we are just outside out front. What I'm trying to show you guys is that if you want that cool shot where you really compress the background, there's a lot of details in the background down this street that you're just not able to pick up with a wider lens like this. Upon research, I had found this telephoto lens that's really amazing for both compressing the background and also be able to get really far and zoom real close to certain subjects that we want to get real close to. There's been times where we find wildlife like the howler monkeys and whatnot and just wouldn't be able to really capture them and get those details if it weren't for the telephoto lens. So let's switch over to that. All right, so now we've got our long lens on, the telephoto 55 to 200 millimeter Canon EFM lens. And as you can see, it really compresses the background. It brings all the details of what's behind me right to seemingly right behind me. Now, this might not be the best example for us. We would be using this in more interesting landscapes, something like mountains behind us, or if there's a big statue you wanted to capture how immense it is. You can't really capture that size when you have a wider lens. So that's why we have this telephoto lens, not to mention the fact that it can really zoom in. So if you are trying to get details of wildlife in the trees or get real close up to something that's maybe hard to access, this is the lens that we would switch over to. So it's really a very important tool in our toolkit in terms of our camera bag. And I'm using it on almost every one of our videos, if not every single one of our videos. All right, guys, so we've gone over a couple lenses. We've actually got one more lens in our toolkit, if you will. The fact that our camera is a Canon M50 it is an APS-C sensor, meaning that it's got a bit of a crop factor with all of the lenses. So I went out and got a 35 millimeter. Why don't I switch over to that and then explain it a little bit more. This is my knockoff Nifty 50 lens. It's the newer 35 millimeter 1.7 F stop lens. It's a nice big wide open aperture. So it's great for low light conditions. As you can see, it seems a lot brighter in the room now because I have this on. It also, because it has that higher open f-stop, it creates that blurry foreground as well as the blurry background. You get that nice buttery bokeh that everybody is familiar with, knows and loves, and kind of has that cinematic look. Although it is a tighter lens, it's not really going to be good for vlogging up close. It's good in low light conditions to capture certain details around the environment that we're in. I also use it as a great portrait lens and for our thumbnails. And it also is really good for product photography as well because you can really dial in and just have that tack sharp focus specifically on the product that you want while creating that nice buttery bokeh all around it. So really cool lens and a budget friendly lens as well. It really can't be beat. And that's it for the lenses. So now let's step outside and we can can go over our action camera as well as our drone with you. All right guys, so we wanted to come out to the pool to show you our next camera, which is our GoPro. We've got the GoPro Hero 8. It's a few years older now that the 11 is out and there's a few newer generations out and available to you. 
we find it works so so pretty good probably one of the biggest lessons i had learned in terms of buying equipment came from this little guy though it was the first camera that we had collectively bought mm -hmm. before we got our main m50 and the, we just wanted to get an action camera. We were out doing different adventures through British Columbia back at home and we wanted to capture those. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is the next edition after this, the 9, came out literally like two months, a month and a half after this. So yeah. with this one, it's not got the front facing screen so you can't really see yourself record and you don't really know what's in frame so that was a little bit of an annoyance and lesson learned make sure that if you're looking to buy a new piece of equipment see what's just about to come out you know do your homework before buying anything that's a lesson learned for sure another thing that we found with this one is well why don't we just show you so now we're flipped over Ooh, chilly. <laughs> flipped over to the GoPro one thing that's really great about this is we do use it for a lot of our adventures mm -hmm. and also there's been a couple times where we're stuck in some pretty poor weather conditions and mm -hmm. so we need something that's more waterproof and so this has always been our go-to in either of those situations but we do take it out whenever we do water activities For our drone, we fly the Mavic Mini. It's a great piece of equipment. It's the OG, the original Mavic Mini, but it still does the job great. It shoots in 2.7K. It doesn't have any kind of follow features, but it does have what's called quick shots. So you can pick a subject, and then it's got a number of different shots that it'll just do automatically, either revolving around the subject, lifting straight off of it, and you get that nice smooth shot without having to be staring at the screen. So that's nice as well. The big selling point for this one for us though is the fact that it is just under the legal limit of 250 grams kind of a uni universal legal limit worldwide where if it's over 250 grams you need to be licensed as a pilot and you need to get the drone registered where as with this guy at 249 grams it flies just under that radar so you don't need to be licensed you don't need to get it registered and being that it's such a small lightweight compact drone it's also convenient for us in that we can pack it right into our bag and it doesn't take up too much space or anything like that now there have since been a couple other versions there's the mavic mini se mavic mini 2 mavic mini 3 pro versions of the 2 and 3. the mavic mini 3 pro is something i'm definitely on my wish list uh, as it's got additional sensors, a better camera, bigger sensor in the camera, and so just overall a better drone. But that's what we use for our aerial shots is the Mavic Mini. If you're looking for a cheap, affordable, lightweight drone, can't be beat. Now let's go back inside and I can show you the computer we've been editing on. We edit actually on a gaming computer. It's the Asus Tough Gaming Computer. It's with the Ryzen 9 4900 3.3 gigahertz processor. 
and it actually comes with the 2060 RTX NVIDIA graphics card. So it is a beast for sure. The reason why we went with the gaming laptop is it's considerably cheaper option than the editing computers. And the biggest difference I found personally was the colors aren't as good as they could be. And also there's no SD port. So what we use is just a little USB SD drive that you just plug into the USB port and it can read the SD cards from there and then we transfer it over onto one of these hard drives and we're good to go. So we found it's a really great setup for us, really great budget friendly option in terms of getting a high speed capable computer to run the Adobe products we use, which that is the editing software we use. We use Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Lightroom, and Adobe Photoshop for all of our video and photos. We do also have a membership with Canva, which we use to edit some of our thumbnails and do some of the kind of entry level graphic designing stuff that we do. It's not really our forte, and so Canva makes it a little bit easier in that regard. But that's everything in terms of our current equipment. All this to say, we are really happy with our current kit, but in the near future, we do want to continue to improve our content and with that includes improving the gear that we use. So if that's something that you'd be interested in possibly helping us out with, we do have a buy us a coffee or in our case, buy us a cocktail account, and you can go over there and support our channel in that way. All of the money will be going towards just improving our videos and improving our content through improving, improving our gear and anyone that does, we really appreciate that. Now, if you found this video informational and entertaining, make sure to smash that like button. And if you'd like to further support our channel, one of the best and freest ways to support our channel is click that subscribe button so you can continue to follow our journey through Mexico and beyond. But that's it for today. Until next time, bye. Grade school is the hardest. It sounds so weird when I say it without Jess, doesn't it? Bye. Don't you worry any longer. Don't you worry any longer. You look ugly when you frown. And I don't want that you around. Didn't know one ever told you. No one ever told you. It's all big fake smells in California.